wins out of eight. Perfection. I can hear Michael. Aiden Hrustich, pinpoint precision. Martin Boyle, the breakthrough arrives. Sarah Moy, who places it beautifully in the top Harry. corner. Harry Sutar, remember the name. The Socceroos go through to the next phase of qualification, knowing that tougher tasks lie ahead. A very good evening and welcome to another edition of the Socceroos Insider. My name is Michael Zapponi and we are pumped because the Socceroos are only days away from action in round three of the World Cup qualifiers. Two huge World Cup qualifiers coming up against China and Vietnam only days away now. Huge show coming up for you. Uh, please feel free to send through questions. We've got some special guests joining us uh, in just a few moments. Aidan Hrustich will be joining us live from camp as will Martin Boyle. Here's a reminder of what's coming up uh, for the Socceroos in the next uh, few days. It's China coming up for the Socceroos as the first home game. It is being played in Qatar, of course, and uh, that game is on at 4 a.m. on Friday for Australian Eastern Time. And then it is Vietnam, a trip to Vietnam, and Hanoi is the fixture for the second contest on September the 7th. That's Tuesday at 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Time live from Hanoi. Of course, you can watch all those games live on the 10 Network. Joining me tonight as a very special guest host is a former Socceroos legend, Johnny Aloisi. Thanks for joining us, Johnny. You've been in Melbourne for a little while now. But we're in lockdown and I haven't even managed to have a coffee with you yet. How are you settling in? The lockdown uh, and the wind. The wind has been uh, horrendous the last uh, few weeks, but uh, yeah, I can't wait till it all opens up and we can catch up for a coffee. But uh, loving that we've been able to train, so we're grateful for that and um, looking forward for the start of the season. And of course, uh, you played uh, so many games with the Socceroos, scored plenty of goals. Uh, World Cup qualifying time is a special time for the players, uh, no doubt. How would they be feeling now? They'll be excited. Uh, this is the, you know, now the business end uh, of the qualifiers. So, it, you know, the, the games that they've got uh, coming up are. are Tough games, uh, a lot of travel. Um, this game against China won't be easy. They're, they're a good side with some good players that have improved over the, the past few years. And then they're traveling to Hanoi. And um, I recall what it was like in 2007, the, the Asian Cup uh, playing in Vietnam. So um, it, it's not gonna be easy, but you, could, you can imagine the group being excited to join each other again, because there's nothing more special than playing for your country. Whenever we talk about John Aloisi, we uh, remember one moment and uh, there's a very special moment which was etched in the memory of uh, every sporting fan, not just football fan, every fan in but Australia. Let's revisit yeah! that very special moment. Yeah! <laughs> Is that you, Zappers? <laughs> <laughs> nice, I like it. Oh, that, that was, was me really doing my best Johnny Aloisi impersonation. Uh, that was in uh, 2018 in Russia at the World Cup. I was lucky enough to be there as part of the media. But no, here's the real moment, of course. Uh, here's Johnny getting Australia through to their first World Cup in a long, long time. A little bit thinner there, yeah, Zappers, and a little bit thinner. <laughs> I, I don't think I could uh, strike a ball like that anymore, I can tell you that now. And less grays, that's for sure. You never get sick of watching that, though. We never get sick of watching that either. Yeah, look, this is what it means uh, to get to a World a Cup, moment, right? And, and this is what's at stake yeah. right? for, for, for everyone now. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, there's nothing more special than playing in the World Cup. We hadn't been there for 32 years before that moment. But, uh, you know, the, the World Cup was special in itself. I thought that was even better than that night against Uruguay. Um, and so the, the players that have had the experience of uh, playing at a World Cup can tell you there's, there's nothing better than it. Nothing can beat it. Um, as a supporter as well, go and support your nation. Um, and so, you know, it, it's exciting times for them now because they're, you know, there's only a little bit to go before they can see if they can make it to the World Cup. I'm sure they will. They've got the squad, Arnie's experience, Arnie's showing what he can do with this squad. You know, eight games in a row they've won. Um, so they'll be full of confidence. This is a live broadcast, so we encourage you uh, to send your questions through. We've got a few coming through for you, Johnny. So uh, you had a chance to play in the AFC late in your international career, including qualifiers and the Asian Cup. How do you feel AFC opposition have changed since then, physically and tactically? That's from Nigel Riley. 
I think they've improved in all aspects. I think um, physically, yes, they've improved because that was one thing that we had over them um, back in when we were playing. Um, tactically, they've improved. They've had a lot to, of foreign coaches that have gone in uh, to a lot of parts of Asia. And technically, they've always been good, but now they've been able to use it uh, even better than what they were uh, all those years ago. So, you know, the, the, the football in Asia has improved a lot, um, not only in the countries that we're going to play against, I think all over, and even the, the so-called smaller nations have improved. All right, let's uh, head now, with Johnny, to Qatar and into Socceroos camp, where one of the stars of the last campaign uh, joins us now, Aidan Frustich. Thanks for joining us, a good Melbourne boy. Great to have you on the program. Aidan, congratulations on the, the last campaign and you've started the season well in Germany as well. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to be back in camp. Since uh, we haven't been together, um, it feels great to be back. Obviously, we're a bit disappointed we can't play at home, but it is what it is. And, um, you know, it feels good to be back with the family. Aidan, we've mainly seen you play higher up for our national team, uh, mainly as an attacking midfielder. Um, how is it playing as a six in the last few games with Vitrek Frankfurt? Because you, you've you've done well. You started the the couple of games uh, of of late and uh, any in a top side in a top competition. So you must be full of confidence as well. Yeah, I get asked this question quite a lot about me playing a six. Look, um, if a manager needs me on a six, um, you know I'm I'm ready to play there and. Uh, I've told I've told Arnie the same. Wherever wherever he thinks uh, he needs me, uh, if it's on the bench, you know, it's no problem. As long as I'm representing my country and uh, the Socceroos, that's me. A little bit different this time around because you'll have uh, Aaron Moy and Tommy Rogic uh, in the midfield with you. I'd imagine that uh, they'll be uh, on the park with you at the same time. Uh, I mean, you must be looking forward to uh, playing alongside them. Yeah, of course. I mean, I haven't played with uh, either of them in an official game. Um, obviously, in training, we've been together in camp. Uh, last camp, they weren't they weren't there, um, unfortunately. But you know, I'm looking forward uh, to these next uh, next two important games for us. Um, they won't they won't be easy. But you know, we we're, we're going to look at ourselves, and uh, we respect every every team and country we play against. But if we if we have a top day like um, like we have. Uh, in the last eight games, um, you know, we, we don't have to worry about anything. How's it been there so far in camp? I know you just arrived on Sunday night that you probably haven't even trained yet. Uh, how, how can you prepare? I know what it's like. It's not easy to, to arrive uh, you know, halfway across the real world and, and actually prepare for a game. Tell the, the people that are watching, how, how do you prepare for this? Um, it's not easy. Obviously, with COVID now, uh, everything's changed a bit. Um, we've uh, all had our negative tests come in, which is the most important. Um, we've had our team stretch. We've had little walks, and we're going for one soon after this. Um, you know, it's it's not easy, but you just got to make the best out of it. And um, you know, we've got uh, we've got good equipment around us, so that's that's the most important for us. And then uh, hopefully tonight is our first training session. And uh, I'm, I'm told, I'm told, Aidan, that uh, away from football, there's a, a fair bit else going on. You're into your fashion a little bit. I've, I've noticed on Instagram. <laughs> what's this all about? Uh, tell, us, uh, tell us what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a second hobby of mine. Um, you know, I like, I like dressing up. I like looking at shoes, clothes, and all that. And uh, as long as I'm out the nightclubs and. Uh, all I care about is fashion. That's what counts. No, I'm joking. All good. Um, <laughs> no, uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, I've got a good mate who's uh, who's starting up a brand, and uh, you know, uh, it just got me interested, to be honest. And uh, you know, I got a bit of time off after training sessions, so uh, I try and make the most of it. Johnny Aloisi is one of the most uh, stylish uh, co coaches going around, so you might need to send him a package just so in the A League, you know, we get uh, we get some shots of Johnny and wearing your gear. There you go, some cross promotion for you. Well, well I have got that would be uh, great. I mean, I mean, I'm the net legend, why not? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I'm I'm free to wear some gear. Uh, I've got Diamante pushing his brand, Poi Boy, onto me uh, quite a bit. Uh, happy vibes, he says it is. So. 
I'm free. Uh, if you want to send me, especially at the moment, I think, uh, Aiden, I need a big jacket because it's getting cold here in Melbourne, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aidan, we've got some questions uh, that have been sent through uh, for you on social media. So I'll, I'll rip through as many as I can in a couple of minutes. Uh, who, who's the best player you've played against? Um, against, probably say when I made my debut against Brazil, Coutinho. Coutinho, we've got a few more coming through. Favourite boots? I've had so many, no idea. Um... <laughs> probably the pink superflies nah. they just you know stand out it was a bit a bit different how about the game you've played in favorite game has to be my debut against brazil all right pre-game meals anything specific Vinny, the chef prepare anything for you over there um yeah broccoli rice chicken and a bit of olive oil very healthy. Pre-game tune. Oh, I've got a playlist, so whatever comes, I just click on shuffle and whatever comes on in my AirPods and my list, and that's all, that's all I listen. Fantastic. Well, mate, we thank you so much for uh, answering those questions, for joining us uh, tonight and uh, early morning in Qatar. We wish you all the best. Look forward to seeing you uh, back in action for the Socceroos. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. What about your uh, favourite shoes, Johnny, when you were playing with that, the Copper Mondiales? The, were you old school like that, the black and whites? Uh, I was uh, old school, but Nike Tempos were my boot, um, the black ones. So uh, I, I have to say I was a Nike man for a long period. And uh, Damien Everett used to look after me, and, and they're the major sponsor <laughs> of the Socceroos and the Matildas. So we're sticking with Nike. Very good. Well done. Now, uh, that's very well. I'll get into trouble for that, for mentioning the coppers. <laughs> now, um, Aidan touched on uh, the midfield and uh, the three um, players in the midfield, Moy, Rogic and Krustic, potentially. He's, as you said, Johnny, played in Germany. He's been playing as a, a deeper midfielder in that sixth position. Do you think Arnie will, in order to get these players all together in the, in the starting eleven, use him in that role? Well, they got two games in a short space of time. So I imagine that he will rotate. Um, but yeah, he could play him a little bit deeper. Look, I, I actually really uh, like him uh, higher. I haven't seen him play deep for his, uh, his club at the moment. But uh, aiden has got a great left foot. He's, he's got that natural ability to also shoot from a distance. Um, but you, you also got Tommy Rogic up in that uh, you know, attacking midfield position who's starting to perform really well for Celtic and uh, and we all know what Aaron Moy can do. But, you know, the, the likes of uh, Irvine and uh, Riley McGree who perform well with the Oli Roos. We, we, we've got a good midfield now. We've got a... Uh, and if Arnie needs to rotate and he's got a good balance there. So uh, not only uh, players that can win the ball, but players that can actually play and, um, and you know, that can create a lot of chances for the, the more attacking players. Well, speaking of those more attacking players, Martin Boyle has been, uh, well, arguably the most informed Socceroo coming into this camp. Uh, seven goals from seven games, if I've got that right, Martin. Uh, plenty going on in Scotland. Uh, every, there's been a lot of talk about Celtic, but don't worry about them. Kibbs are on top of the table. You must be uh, absolutely stoked uh, coming into this camp. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we're just going quietly about our business, which is great. Hopefully no one sees us coming, but... At the same time, you know the the competition that that is in Scotland, um, where you you like see a Celtic and Rangers, so we know how tough it will be. But yeah, things are going great at the moment, and and uh, hopefully we can keep going. How have you found it, Martin? Whenever you get with a national team, you got uh, little time to prepare. We asked Aiden about this, and it's not easy for a footballer, um, you know, not to really train before a game. But uh, how have you found international football? Yeah, obviously, I, I haven't been on the scene um, long. So, obviously, my experiences of being here has, has been great. We, you know, we're in a privileged position. We're very fortunate that we have great staff around us, great management, um, and a, a great team. So, I mean, there, there's no excuse. We have everything here that, that, that's for us, um, which is great. And, and you settle in quick. Um, the travelling, I mean, I'm pretty sure more, more of the boys have put in more miles than me. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been great. Like you say, everyone's there for you and, and it's just 
for you to show up and, and produce what you can. Yeah, I know a lot of players say that uh, they'll play wherever the manager puts them, but uh, we, we've seen you have the ability to play in, in several roles in that in that front three. Uh, tell us a little bit about you know what what you like, especially at, at what you've seen what we've seen from you at club levels working so well for you at early part of the season. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm very versatile. Um, I mean, at club football, I've played striker, left wing, right wing, right wing, um, which is completely different, but. Yeah, I think every player would be the same. Um, as long as you're on the pitch and you're you're playing, you're happy. Um, and I'm I'm more than happy to to do my bit for the team where it's playing anywhere. Um, which is is the main thing. I mean, like I say, we're in a privileged position where we're playing football for a living, and it's it's fantastic. And it was every boy's dream. So I'm pretty sure when you pull that jersey on and and you get on the pitch, you'll 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 do what you can for the team, and you'll play anywhere. You're you're absolutely flying with Hibs, um, but the weather is different over in Scotland. Uh, it might have been a little bit warmer at this time of the year, but what's it like playing, um, you know, in the humidity and the heat of Asia? Do you, do you find it difficult, or you've adjusted uh, well and then you have no issues with that at all? Yeah, I'll say Scotland's twenty degrees at the moment. That's that's like, uh, new highs <laughs> that's over warm. there, but <laughs> that's unbelievable weather. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, it's. You know, the climate change is, is completely different over here. Um, obviously, me being born and bred in Scotland, it's completely different. But at the same time, it's it's just how you adapt. Um, we have to get on with it. <laughs> it's not going to change. So it's just how staying hydrated, uh, make sure you're eating well. Um, and there's obviously supplements that you can take to, to also help you through it. But at the same time, um, yeah, it, it's there. It, it's... It's probably mind over matter at the same time. Um, it's just it's be about being strong and and um, and managing it and, and looking after your body. Um, and I'm, I'll show you adapt uh, adapt fine. And we've seen so much change over the last eighteen months since COVID's come in. Martin, just tell us a little bit about what it's like to to play in this environment now. So much you can't walk out of the hotel, uh, go for a coffee. Uh, you have to wear masks everywhere. There is so much tougher securities, training's different. Just bring us inside what it what it's what's changed in the last period of time. Yeah, uh, obviously it's crazy times. Um, I mean the unknown of you have to wear masks everywhere, um, travel with the restrictions. Obviously we we can't play at home. Um, it's completely different. Um, the sacrifices that some of the, the boys have made to be with their family at the same time and you know there's a lot behind the scenes probably go further detail um it's it's just yeah it's absolutely crazy but at the same time we're still getting to represent australia and um, which is which is great you know we're, we're still getting the pull on the jersey and we can still thankfully manage to get these qualifiers going um albeit we're, we're playing in um in the middle asia but at the same time we're we're here um, and it's what we have to do to qualify and if it makes it a little bit tougher then then well be it i'm sure we'll be i'm sure we like the challenge uh, i can say it that way uh, and and personally i'm i'm looking forward to it um so i'd, I'd like to think that all the all the squad is now before we let you go we know you've got to go to a gym session if andrew clark uh, if you're late then just blame me for this but um aiden hustich <laughs> huge into fashion. We've picked up some photos of you on Instagram and, and your fashion sense over the years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that all about? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> That's my face. normal gear. <laughs> That's how I normally dress. <laughs> no, um, I think there was a few parties in there. I think a few Christmas dues with the, with the Hibs boys. Um, so yeah, you've, you've caught me on the the, the, the good, my good day. Um, I dress up quite well there, but I think the rock one, the first you, the first one you put in, it was my wife's brother Stag do, um, so we we're all dressed as wrestlers. So I thought I had to give it a good go. Oh, good stuff, mate. Well, we we love to see you uh, on and off the pitch, uh, having fun. It's a uh, great. We've got a, a couple of questions. Veg, well, a couple of questions, and now you're going to be late for gym. But anyway, Vegemite, yes or no? No. 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 <laughs> Has anyone tried to give it to you? Ryan Grant would have been uh, trying to stuff that the down. First the, the first camp I was in, 
the guys were trying to spoon feed me it, tell me it was the best thing on the planet. But I'll just stick to the Tim Tams for now. Who from the Socceroos has been most aggressive in trying to assimilate you to Australian culture, force feeding you Tim Tams? I think everyone's been the same. I mean, every time I come into camp, there's new questions and new things going on. Um, you know, the staff are trying to get me culture does anything, um, which is great. But yeah, I think I think everyone's trying to play. What video game are you playing these days? Asks uh, Lee Brock some facts. Um, bit of FIFA, bit of Call of Duty Warzone. Um, I've been playing the PGA 2K1 is at the golf game, which is quite good. Since uh, I like to play golf myself, I, I'll stick to computer games because I'm terrible. There's a few decent golfers in that squad as well. I know uh, Trent Sainsbury can hit a mean drive. Matty Ryan's not bad as well. So we look forward to seeing a, a challenge on the golf course when time allows. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Matt. He's a great character, Johnny. Uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to, to spend a bit of time with him in, in, in camp. And uh, uh, one of those players that you'd love to have around as well. And, and what he's done since being in the squad has been fantastic. And coming in with red hot form, you know, as a, a player, when you're in red hot form for your club, it, it often translates to form for your country. It does. And, um, you know, you, you've got that confidence. He's got pace, uh, which, you know, defenders hate, especially when they start running at you or running in behind. Um, and, he, yeah, he's scoring goals at the moment for Hibs, which who are doing very well. And, and you know, you want those characters in your side, especially when you go into camp for a long period. And I know uh, this camp probably shorter than most that they go into, but you need that uh, entertainer. You need that, that guy that's uh, always making you laugh. Um, because, you know, sometimes camps can get a little bit uh, uh, boring at times. and You're doing the same thing every day and uh, there's not much going on. But, uh, you know, those players, uh, they're so important for the team morale. Don't forget to send your questions through. Johnny Aloisi will stay with us for the next few minutes uh, before we wrap things up. And uh, Johnny was happy to, to answer your questions uh, about the Socceroos uh, coming up shortly, Johnny. But before we do that, let's talk about that front three. Martin is an important part of that. But obviously, no Matt Leckie, no Jamie McLaren for this camp. Um, how do you see Adam Taggart coming into this camp? He uh, was in red hot form a little while ago, has had some injuries recently and uh, has just got back to playing in the last camp, uh, he, he had a bit of an injury, so he didn't play much for Graham Arnold. But he's that number nine that uh, that, that Arnie, uh, you know, will want to use, I would imagine. Yeah, he's uh, Tags is a natural goal scorer. He, you know, his movement in the box is very good. He can also link up, but he's uh, one that will get on the end of things uh, quite well. And uh, you know, Jane McLaren is uh, not there obviously because. Uh, you know, being here in Australia, a lot of the players that Arnie didn't select, but um, you know, it's an opportunity for uh, Taggart because you know, he's shown glimpses of what he can do for the national team. Having worked closely with him, he's a, he's a top striker and uh, his movement uh, is great to get away from defenders. Um, he understands the game really well. And I'm looking forward to see if he, he when he does play, because I'm sure he'll play a part in these two games. That goal he scored there, we just saw against Jordan. Uh, you can't uh, underestimate the, the importance of that First win that uh, Australia had, had in Jordan. Pressure cooker environment, full crowd there, and he took that chance. Daniel Arzani is another one that uh, we'd love to talk about. Australian football fans love to talk about. Uh, he's back in the Socceroos uh, set up now for the first time since the World Cup in 2018. Uh, one of the things I suppose that frustrates fans most about Daniel is he's so much potential and we want him to realise that potential. How do you see where he's at in, in his career? Look, we would have loved to have seen Daniel Arzani play a lot more uh, over the last four years. Uh, um, but, you know, he's uh, in a good space at the moment. Uh, going to the Olympics, um, you know, Arnie uh, has given him that confidence. He looks fitter. Um, then I've seen him for a long period and he's got that X factor, you know, he, he can glide past players. He also showed good work rate at the Olympics and, uh, and Arnie likes that and, and, he, and he wants that in his side. But, um, you know, he's one of those players that uh, every time he gets the ball, you're at the edge of your seat because you, you sense something is going to happen. And, uh, and that's why he's so 
um, liked by the Australian public. That's why we're expecting even more from him. Um, and let's hope that uh, in these two games that he shows again what he's capable of doing. And then again with his club side, because uh, he needs to play regular football for him to show what he can do at, uh, at the highest level. All right, a couple of questions uh, for you, Johnny, from, uh, from our fans. Which countries in our group have improved the most and which countries had the most intimidating atmosphere? That's from uh, John <laughs> Astra Smith Zeneca. <laughs> Good on you, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Um, oh, look, that ball <laughs> improved a lot. Look, Japan is, uh, is one of those sides that we know really well and uh, and we always find it tough against them. And even over there, you know, the, the atmosphere is always good. Um, intimidating. The, the Saudi uh, fans are quite intimidating when you go there. Um, you know, I played there. This is going back in 97. So that's a long time ago now. But, um, you know, it's and their football, especially at home, they're a tough team to play against. They play some great football and they've got some very good players. Um, and, you know, I spoke about, the, you know, going to Hanoi. You know, the conditions there are not easy. I think all these games, when you play away from home, are tough. Um, you expect at home, uh, if we do get to play any games at home, that we should be favourites. But I still think that we're, we're capable of beating all the sides, whether it's away or at home. Yeah, so tough that no home games. We know our record uh, at home has been so strong. Who has the left foot, Krustich or Aloisi? Oh, that's an easy one. Krustic has got the best left foot. He, uh, he scores goals from a distance and scores three kicks. Um, the, the longest range goal I scored was from the penalty spot. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Johnny, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you uh, as part of the Soccer Rules Insider tonight. And uh, we, we, we love having you there. And, and good luck with um, the next few weeks and months. And, uh, Look forward to seeing you in action on the sideline with Western United. Thanks for having me on and look forward to catching up for that coffee, Zappers. Absolutely. And thank you to everyone who uh, tuned in to Socceroos Insider tonight. All the questions that have come through. Don't forget the Socceroos in action is away now. It is the first game in round three of the World Cup qualifiers. Australia v China. That's coming from Qatar as our home game. 4 a.m. At coming up on the 3rd of September. And then, not long after that, September the 7th at 10 p.m., it's Vietnam versus the Socceroos. All games live, Network 10, and we'll be back for another edition of the Socceroos Insider on Father's Day, I'm told. So uh, tune in on Sunday with your dad, and we look forward to seeing you again then. And in the meantime, uh, from me, Michael Zappone, John Aloisi, and all the crew, it's a uh, goodbye from the Socceroos Insider for now. They found the goal that they so desperately craved. Virtually the last kick of the game. Bresciano's in. Could he nick the points for Australia? He can! A goal against all the odds. Two goals like 2006. Cahill attacks it. And Japan's nemesis from the World Cup in 2006 is back to haunt them again. Carl with the corner. Oh, and it's gone in. Australia have a second goal. And it's Timmy Cahill again. A priceless victory in Doha. Always the man for a crisis. 1-1. Australia back on the attack through Tommy Hall. Archie Thompson scores! 2-1 Australia. What a turnaround for Holger Osik's team. The Roos get the job done in style. He throws this away. And Bresciano scores! Just what the doctor ordered for Australia. Roos the floating. There's Cahill! Roos turns inside the box. Robbie Cruz! That'll do it for the Roos. 3 0. And it's flipped up towards Lucas Neal. I don't believe it. Lucas Neal has got his first international goal. Brazil, here we come. Rashiano to curl it. Kennedy! Q delirium in Sydney. It is three in a row for the Socceroos as they book their tickets for Brazil. He's only been off the bench for a matter of moments. Smith has still got plenty in the tank. Up from left fullback. Decent ball and Cahill! He's there again! One touch from Timmy Cahill. One small step towards Russia for Australia. They've got the job done, Australia. Again, Alma Sila with the error. And Australia now do have the opening goal. Matt Lackey heading for the byline. Decent ball in and Juric! And Australia's lead is restored.
Now Tommy Rogic, oh! And Australia have the advantage once again. How crucial could that one prove to be?